so this is again a problem on viscous force so we must know this formula that viscous force is given by eta a dv by dr eta is viscosity is the contact area and this is velocity gradient where that contact is made so in the problem we have a long cylinder of radius r1 that is displaced along its axis with a constant velocity v0 so this is the small long cylinder of radius r1 that is moved with a constant velocity v0 it is inside a stationary coaxial cylinder of radius r2 so this cylinder is inside a coaxial radius of coaxial cylinder of radius r2 the space between this stationary cylinder and this moving cylinder is filled with viscous liquid so between this cylinder and this there is liquid inside find the velocity of the liquid as a function of distance r from the axis of the cylinders now we know that this part of the cylinder the surface of the cylinder is moving with v0 this part of the liquid that is in touch with the top part of the cylinder that part of the liquid is at rest in between there will be a there will be the function of velocity that is changing from 0 to v0 we need to find what is that function so we are going to consider a shell which is like this so this shell is completely made of liquid and its boundaries are hypothetical so let's consider a random hollow cylindrical shell of water with outside radius r and inside radius random and its length p l so of this shell the length is l outside radius is r and inside radius is random so it can be any quantity it doesn't matter now on outside layer of that shell force due to velocity gradient so we have taken so this point is at distance r so let's take a small thin layer of further liquid and the thickness of that small layer of liquid let that be dr and let's assume velocity at the outside boundary of this uh, shell be v and let's say velocity here is v plus dv so now we can write our viscous force on this top layer of the shell so this force f is what we are writing so f is equal to eta a dv by dr because velocity gradient between these two points is dv by dr so velocity change is dv divided by distance between these two points is dr so force is eta a dv by dr and what is a so cross so area in contact so of this shell we are talking about the lateral surface area so that will be 2 pi r into l so eta a into dv by dr a is 2 pi r l so this is the force on this shell element on the outside surface so let's say this force is f now understand this big at a steady state whatever the velocity of each particle in the shell so it will obviously vary from this point to this point but if you take any particle which is moving from here to here its velocity does not change so the shell itself if you just take the boundaries of the shell inside that the momentum change is zero so let's read that as every particle's velocity is constant momentum of whole shell is constant too now be very careful i am not saying that every particle's velocity is v not or every particle's velocity is zero or v nothing like that i am talking about the whole volume of this shell so if you take any particle inside this shell that particle is always traveling with the same velocity which means the system which we have defined that is this shell the momentum of that shell is not changing so again as every particle's velocity is constant momentum of whole shell is constant too therefore net force on shell is zero 
So what are the forces? So on top layer, we have seen there is a force F that we have calculated. And that is because the velocity gradient on this small layer of water above this shell. So another force to counter that must be on the inside layer of the shell. And that force should be because of the velocity gradient between the inside layer and the layer just below it. So this blue part. So top force is because of the velocity gradient in this blue part. And the force in the inside layer of the shell is due to the velocity gradient in this blue part. So because the net force is zero, this force should also be F. So that's what I've written. So since the total momentum of this uh, shell which we have taken is conserved, so net forces should be zero. On the top layer, the force is towards left, that is F. So in the inside layer, force should be towards right and that should also be F. So on inside layer of shell two, forces, force should be F, independent of inside radius. Now remember, we have taken inside radius as random. So it doesn't matter at what distance you go, that force is going to be F always. That means F is independent of R and therefore it is a constant. Which means in this equation, which we have got, F is a constant. It doesn't matter at what distance R you go, this force F is always going to be same. So you can see vice versa also. So if you can fix the inside radius, then if this force is F, then you can vary the outside radius. And then the force towards left is always going to be same as this. So that is F. So either way, you can fix this force and go inside and that force will always be F. Or you can fix this force as F and you go outside at any radius and that force will also always be F. So that force F on any layer you consider is always going to be constant. Now, of course, the layer has to be of a length L. That is the only condition. That force comes to be eta into 2 pi RL dV by dr, which is a constant. So now let's solve this equation using, uh, not using, uh, taking this F as constant. So this is our equation. So F can be treated as, treated as constant. So we can take it outside of integral. And we have seen we have a relation between R and V, which is what we wanted in the problem. So F dr by R is equal to 2 pi eta L integral dV. So it's the same equation, both sides. We are just going to change the limits. So when R varies from R1 to R2, V varies from V0 to 0. R1 to R2, V0 to 0. And when R varies from R2 to R, V varies from 0 to V. So R2 to R, 0 to V. So we have taken the limits such that we get a term of uh, zero in both the equations. So the equations will be easy to solve. You can get the same answer if you take the limit from R1 to R also. But I have not taken that because I want this zero to be in both the limits. So solving this, we get this. Solving this, we get this. So we want V as a function of R, but we don't know what is, the, what is F. We want to get rid of L. So we just divide these two equations. And once we do that, we get our answer. So V comes to be this, which is a function of R. And you can see it is independent of eta. So it doesn't matter what liquid you take, the velocity variation is going to be same. Now one thing in our problem, I have taken F towards left because that is consistent, consistent with how we are changing V to V plus dV and R to R plus dr. And we have taken V towards left. So if we are assuming dV to be positive, which is, uh, which is our assumption here. So of, of course, with that assumption, the force on the outer layer should be towards left. But that is not the reality because we know the velocity is actually decreasing. So of course we are dealing with variables everywhere. So of F will of course come negative and that we can see here. So F you can see comes to be negative. So all the terms here are positive. So with a minus sign, so F comes to be negative. So we can see that F is negative. It makes sense as actual force on outside layers is retarding. 
and opposite to our assumed direction. Mathematically too, it should be negative as dv by dr is negative in this equation. So you can see velocity is v0 here and it's zero here. So as you move up, dv by dr is negative. So as you increase dr, as you, sorry, as you increase r, v is decreasing. So dv by dr is negative. So from here also you can see f is negative, but after solving, clearly you can see f comes to be negative. Now, there's one last point. So when we say that the forces on this uh, shell are balanced, we only considered the forces on the surface. So we said on the top surface forces towards left, and we directly said force on the bottom surface, on the inside surface should be equal and opposite, equal in magnitude and opposite in sign. But there can be force on this surface also. So if there's a pressure difference between this point and this point, there can be a force that will balance the overall force. But that pressure difference is not there. So pressure on both sides is same. So let's prove that quickly. So why there is no pressure difference? So we are going to go by the reverse method. So let's assume there is a pressure difference. So let's say it is delta P per unit length. So if you take any two points at a distance of one meter, let's say the pressure difference between those two points is delta P. So PA minus PB is equal to delta P. Now in the problem it is given, it's a long cylinder and this, the converging cylinder, sorry, the cover, cover cylinder is also long. So let's say these long cylinders are placed inside a, inside a big water tub or something. And this is pulled with V naught. Now, I'm saying VA minus VB is delta P. So by symmetry, you can see that as you move delta P, that variation should be linear. So if the length of the tube is L naught, let's assume that and it's a long tube. So PP minus PQ is equal to L naught times delta P. And also we have taken all these points P, A, B, Q at the same height. So here you can clearly see the pressure at P is equal to P naught plus rho GH. And pressure at Q is also P naught plus rho GH. So PP is equal to PQ is equal to P naught plus rho GH. So from these two equations, you can see if PP is, is equal to PQ, then delta P must be zero. So that's why when we wrote the forces, when we balanced the forces here, we did not bother about the force, forces on the flat surfaces. So only forces will be on the lateral surfaces and its magnitude is given by this and these forces are constant. All right.